What's up guys, CP Mori here back with another video and in the past 4 to 5 years we haven't exactly seen the massive improvement in CPUs like what we've seen recently in 2017 and I guess what we'll see here in 2018. We've seen very small and incremental updates to the CPU market with quad cores dominating, then quad cores with hyperthreading dominating and it wasn't again until recently where quad cores actually stopped dominating and ruling the roost. But if you have an existing CPU CPU from the Intel side, is there really that much of a benefit of jumping from an older CPU up to the latest generation Coffee Lake chips? So today we have ourselves an i7 from the 4th generation family and an i7 from today's Coffee Lake family with the 8th generation and we're going to be doing some comparisons to seeing really how much of a performance difference is there between 4 generations of CPU architectures or rather CPU launches, not so much architectural changes. Now our 4th generation CPU Core i7 that we have here today and subsequently the 4th generation refresh chips are starting to fall into that time frame where it's ready for an upgrade cycle. They're about 4-5 to five years old at the time of recording and well people are kind of looking at their systems going it's getting a little bit old it might be time for a brand new system but with Intel again not really doing a whole lot of changes up until recently is there really that much of a performance difference you'll see between your old system and your brand new one if the video cards were the same. Now do keep in mind for our testing today, we're going to be using the exact same video card because let's face it, a 5 year old video card will be outclassed by even some of the mid range cards today. So we're going to just take the video card out of the equation and mainly look at the CPU itself. So with that being said, let's take a closer look at the CPUs we have here today. The one that I'm holding right now is an Intel Core i7-4770K that launched back in Q2 of 2013, just under 5 years ago. And with the latest Core i7 8th generation 8700K that we also to have borrowed for testing was released just a few months ago and actually not even the whole family is out yet so it is still extremely new type of chipset. But with that being said, taking an even closer look at these particular chips, our older Core i7 that we have from 2013 is running 4 cores and 4 threads, with the i7 from today looking at 6 cores and 12 threads. And just for reference, back in the day when this guy was out, 6 cores and 12 threads was the highest end i7 you could get, and now 6 cores and 12 threads is kind of what we kind of expect out of top tier parts. And in the speed department, our older Core i7-4770K is looking at a base speed of 4.2GB gigahertz with a boost of 4.5 gigahertz, whereas the newer chip can clock down to a low state of 3.7 gigahertz for better power savings and thermal management when under idle and sort of low loads, and when it comes to boost speeds this guy boosts all the way up to 4.7 gigahertz with a 95 watt TDP versus a 91 watt on the older chips. So it's kind of interesting to see the older chip actually running with a slightly lower TDP, however with that being said, they're both case skews so really that TDP doesn't exactly matter. Cash wise, we're looking at 8 megs of cash on the 4th generation chip with a whopping 12 megs on the brand new high end i7 chip. And just for reference, back again in 2013 when this chip was out, the highest end i7 you could buy was the 4960X with 15 megs of cash and only 6 cores and 12 threads. So our Coffee Lake chip is actually getting pretty close to our older 4960X. So maybe stay tuned for that one. We might want to compare our i7 from today to some older chips out there. But nevertheless, Let's back to our comparisons here. We have a GPU that's basically the same kind of marketing, the same numbers here, although the new version on the Coffee Lake chip is branded as the UHD edition, and overall there still are a couple things here. However, if we flip over and look at the similarities, there's actually quite a few here. Both of these chips do support up to 64GB of DDR4 RAM, both of them have the same base iGPU speed for whatever value that holds to anyone out there, and both of them come in on the 14 nanometer process with 16 PCIe lanes and a TJ Maxx of 100 degrees Celsius and not to mention they're both supported by the 1151 socket and both are unlocked processors. Now that 1151 socket and 14 nanometer process is actually pretty interesting to see that it's been just under 5 years and we haven't seen a brand new socket design or a different change in the actual manufacturing process. So it's kind of cool to see that we've been able to get this long out of one socket and also to this long out of the same architecture. Though with that being said, do 
keep in mind that while the 1151 socket may be the same and electrically they'll fit into each other socket, they don't work as the latest generation of Coffee Lake chips do need a different chipset to what the 4th gen will actually run off. So as much as time has actually passed between these two chips, there are actually quite a few similarities between the two when it comes to the paper side. With that being said, we're not here to look at paper at all, we're here to run our tests and see whether when it comes to the gaming front, whether there's really that much of a difference at all. So with that being said, let's get into some of the tests that we did run. And to keep it clear, we did use the i7-4770K for our test at stock speeds. This is something that all i7-4770Ks can achieve, so if you do run this particular chip or a very similar one, you can kind of get an idea of what it might be running at. We also do pair this guy up with 16 gigs of crucial DDR4 RAM, or rather Corsair RAM, uh, being the part of the Vengeance lineup, and of course the Everlove Z97 Maximus 6 Ranger motherboard, or at least in my opinion, a very much loved motherboard. On the Coffee Lake side, we are looking at the 8700K once again at stock speeds, because this is something everyone can achieve, and these are numbers that, again, everyone can achieve. And in terms of our RAM, we're running the same 16 gigs of Corsair DDR4 RAM, and in terms of our motherboard side, we're rocking the Gigabyte Aurora Z370 Gaming K3 motherboard, which we checked out right there. Not a too bad motherboard, don't mind it if I do. Anyway, with that being said, we also do pair this guy up with the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, as it is the highest end video card on the gaming side that we can buy. Yes, there is the Titans and the, that kind of stuff out there, but today we want to look more at the gaming front. So with that being said, let's go ahead and run our tests. And whilst we take a look at some of the numbers, I do want to go ahead and point out that the new Coffee Lake chip can actually support faster memory speeds. Now for this video, we just averaged everything out, same speed RAM across the board, we did some tweaking here. But if you want to check out this video right here, where we actually found that in theory, faster RAM speeds can definitely help, the faster Coffee Lake chips can actually also do support the faster memory, which in theory should give one or two more FPS, but... In reality, we said everything the same, so it would be clear across the board. And again, I'm actually pretty surprised just how well the older 4770K held up in all games. In fact, the older chip, when paired with the GTX 1080 Ti, was able to hold its own, and I was really shocked to find such an old chip actually standing up to even some of the brand new chips that are out here today. And again, just looking at them, it's really cool to see that it stands up for such an older chip. And in some cases, I was even able to beat out an Intel Core i5 from the latest generation with this older SKU CPU. Not sure exactly how that even happened, but not too shabby there. But jumping over to the CPU benchmarks, yeah, that's when the 4070K kind of got absolutely destroyed as expected. Being such an older CPU with such less amount of cores and threads compared to the latest generation, it's not surprising that we did get an absolute stomping here. With that being said, in games it did held up, but if you are looking into content creation, video editing, photoshopping, anything like that, it basically goes completely out the window, which is a little bit disappointing to see. Don't get me wrong, you could easily edit 4K video on this guy. In fact, I edited 4K videos on a 3770 for quite some time. I think it was a 3770, but either way, a third generation Core i7. So when it comes to content creation, it is definitely possible, but at the end of the day, it isn't as great as some of the stuff out there. So after looking at our numbers, is it worth upgrading to the latest 8th generation CPU from an older 4th gen or similar processor? And to put it simply, yes there would be a performance difference, however if you're only strictly looking at the gaming side, there was a slight improvement, but something that I personally wouldn't be throwing out an entire gaming system for. As we mentioned earlier in the video, chances are if you've got an older CPU, you probably also do have an older GPU, and just upgrading that GPU will give you much better gaming performance. As we saw here, when we paired it up with the GTX 1080 Ti, whilst I didn't mention this a moment ago, I didn't notice any bottlenecking on that front, so the GTX 1080 would be an awesome upgrade for an existing 4 or 5 year old system. And the difference really between the two different FPS on the two different CPUs is really, really minor when it comes to the real world. Sure, on paper it looks like a really big difference, but in the real world, I barely could even tell the difference between the latest generation Coffee Lake and the older fourth generation CPU. So in my opinion, there really isn't too much of a difference here. However, if you're more into the streaming side, multitasking, trying to do some editing of your game streams, or if you are like me and a creator in general who also too uses their computer to play video games, the older 4770K is definitely not up to snuff, and the latest generation i7 8700K would be a much better upgrade. But if you're strictly only looking at gaming numbers, only planning to play video games, 
there really isn't too much of a difference here. All in all though, if you are already on a 4770K or a similar CPU and you don't really plan to push the CPU side too much, buying a new video card will definitely offer you way better performance than upgrading your entire platform as you could put the money from the CPU and the GPU into a better video card or even two better video cards than what you have on your existing system and doing upgrades like that would then give you better gaming performance out there. So a 4770K and a 1080 Ti and maybe some SSDs would be a much better upgrade than dropping back to maybe a high-end i5 and a mid to high-end video card. It's just a much better deal. But again, in short, yes, the newer chip definitely has more performance, but strictly speaking in games, there isn't as much as what the synthetics do show if you are looking on the CPU side. With that being said, let me know down in the comment sections what CPU do you run, and if you are on an older chip, would you consider upgrading to the latest AMD CPUs or the latest Intel ones? Do let me know down below, because the performance out of these old guys isn't actually too bad. If you want to pick up one of these latest generation Coffee Lake chips, you can find them linked down in that description box. And if you want to check out the videos that I did mention, link down there, or they should have popped up at the timely points. Otherwise, guys, thanks all for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one.